I hate snags. <laughs> One of the best things you can do is get down at low tide, find the really snaggiest of snaggiest rocks, try and avoid them when you start fishing. Now you could always use heavier line as well. The thicker line is less likely to cut on the rocks. What about your rod tip? If you've got your rod tip at a higher angle, then you're less likely for that line to drag in the surf and get you into snags. And if you've got a fish on, then it's time to retrieve that fish and the terminal tackle uh, a little bit faster than you normally would. You don't want to miss the fish, but it's worth bringing it in quite quickly so you don't snag up. Now, using a pulley rig with less clutter is a great idea as well. And the good thing about these pulley rigs, when you're retrieving them in and you've got a fish on, uh, then the weight will lift up on the rig assembly and it's less likely to snag on the rocks as you lift it up. Make sure you choose the right weight as well. A too lighter weight can get pushed into the snags, whereas a heavy weight, when you're retrieving it, more likely to drag along the bottom and, and snare your bait. So choose the right weight for the conditions. It's really worth keeping a watch out for the tides and the currents as well. So maybe cast up tide and let the weight drop into the position you want it to stay. And that way you're less likely for it to be pulled across to a, a snaggy place. Thinking slightly outside the box, just don't bother to bottom fish at all. You can use these fish black minnows. They've got their hook point at uppermost and they're really hard to snag. And of course the other thing you could do is use a float as well. Another thing you can do is get a grip lead and get the wires and just turn those at right angles or even get a, um, a lead with really long grip leads and then turn those out at right angles each of those in turn with some pliers and the good thing about that in theory is when it drops down near a small little crevice like that yep, um, it should stop it going down those smaller ones and that's the worst of the snags those you're not getting it out when the lead drops down and gets stuck so use those grip leads at a right angle I'm going to shoehorn in the old downloading Google Earth Pro as well absolutely love this program we've done a video on it before um, but you can actually see you can see um, tidal patterns you can see individual rocks and boulders and snaggy areas particularly if you're fishing a new mark um, and you're not sure about the snags then have a look at Google Earth Pro I'll even leave a link at the end but before we look at number one, um, there's plenty more things you can do. You've got to know your venue. You can practice at that venue as well. You'll get to know exactly where the snags are. I've used underwater photos and videos in the past. You've got the benefit of knowing what fish are actually under the water in clearer conditions, of course. I've used float markers as well with old bottles. I can cast the bait to the bottle, particularly between two big structures where I think the fish are running. And then fixed spools, you get a faster retrieve with fixed spools over most mot multipliers. Um, my number one tip though would be to use one of the rotten bottoms. Um, so it's basically a weaker bit of line tied onto a stronger bit of line. And the idea is if the lead part of the rig gets trapped, um, it snaps off. So I've got 40, 50 pounds here. And then the thinner black line is 20 pounds. You just hook that on there it won't take a power cast but it will get you out of the snags because that will come off and then if it does get snagged it will snap off and that will leave you with the hooks and hopefully the fish on the other end as well i hope you enjoyed those tips it'd be great if you could subscribe as well should be a link to the google earth video that we did and then we'll shortly be doing different types of rotten bottom rigs as well thanks for watching